Okay, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, lecturers, elders, and those who are watching in YouTube. So welcome everyone to our session this evening. So today is March 17, 2021, Thursday evening, the 18th session of our online 21 Days Divine Principle Lecture. So to officially start our session this evening, let us sing our Chun Il Gok Anthem. of heaven, earth, and humankind. Good evening. We are so grateful for this evening as you have given us this opportunity to gather together for our session uh, this evening for our continuous online Divine Principle Lecture. And this evening we'll be discussing the life course of our true parents. And it is really very important to know our true parents' life course for, for us to really understood their heart, their deep heart of sacrificing your children, their families for the sake of your will, for the sake of humanity and for the world. And especially liberating your heart. And we have to 
reflect on that also how in our own way also that we could liberate your heart by fulfilling our responsibilities and by uniting with our true parents' vision to really bring about the substantial kingdom of heaven here on earth, especially in sharing all these blessings and ideals to all of the people, especially to our tribes, as we have this tribal, heavenly tribal Messiahship mission. And we are so grateful for always guiding us, giving us this opportunity to study your words, to study the life course of our true parents, and for everything, the blessings, the guidance, we have to reflect on that and how we could return back to you by being filial sons and daughters and be able to uh, bring uh, our portion uh, of responsibility in substance. And we are so grateful for everything that you have provided to us, especially for this moment again, as we have this opportunity to study the life course of our true parents. Again, we offer this evening uh, as we start, uh, as we'll start our session this evening, uh, gratefulness for all the love and blessings. I'd like to offer this and report in my name, my wife's name, Julius and Tammy Escletos. Welcome to our session this evening. So please open your cameras for our uh, picture taking. Lahat ba dito na? Ate Christine, open your camera po. Let's have a picture. I don't know. Okay. Naka-open na lahat. Si Vince, si Christine, <laughs> si Anne May. Okay, welcome, Vince, Christine, Anne May. You please open your camera. Josephine, Patrick. And also lecturers. Ate Anna May. Wala si ano, Anna May. Yung ano niya, camera. Okay, wala na. Okay. Let's have our small heart okay. brothers and sisters. Start with small heart. Okay, thank you. Okay. Vision 2027. Me, me, me. Okay. Si Baragi Sinang. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this evening we'll be discussing uh, the life course of our true parents. So it will be given to us by, of course, no need to introduce her, our very own sister, Sister Monina. So please help me in welcoming. Sister Mulina. Okay. Narinig po ba ako, brothers and sisters? Good evening po. Yes, loud and clear. 
Okay, good evening po elders, leaders, brothers and sisters. Good evening po. So welcome to our 18th date of our Divine Principle online workshop. So this evening, um, ano, I would like to share first my screen. Pala. So this evening we will continue to this. We will discuss about the True Parents Life course. But before that, um, I would like to hear from the participants. Yung topic natin last Monday. Um, short recap. Okay. May may ask from the participants. Um, Kuya Patrick. Are you there? So, good evening, uh, elders, brothers, and sisters. Last meeting, we discussed about the chapter uh, six of the second part of the divine principle, which is the second coming of the Messiah. We learned there that uh, about that uh, the time, the specific time when our uh, the second coming of the Messiah will will be born, and we also have learned about the on how will he come to to the physical world or who will come on earth uh, in uh, he will be born in flesh just like jesus did and also we also learned uh, where he will be born which is in korea and we also uh, learned some of the the things that our true father did then that would be all. Thank you. Yes, po. thank you so much, po, Kuya Patrick. So, yeah, that's right. No, so, yan, we know already about the second advent. Um, yung pag ano niya, so kung kailan siya at sa siya galing at the same time, at the same time, ngayon nandito na siya. So, okay, I will con I, let's proceed my topic for this evening. Allow me to share my screen first. Nakikita po ba ko ya? Yes. Okay. Yung slides siyo mo na lang. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yan, once again, our topic for tonight is all about the understanding Understanding True Parents Life Course. So this is from, uh, this is our beloved, <laughs> from Kuya Surandi Ani. Uh, continue. So if we say that Understanding True Parents Life Course, um, ano po yung nasa isip niyo po, brothers and sisters? Sa topic na po ito. What can you, ano po? What would you think? So, dito natin malalaman kung ano yung um, pinagdaanan ni True Parents at the same time, yung mga ano niya, uh, yun nga, pinagdaanan niya and then sa life, lifestyle niya po. Then, who are the True Parents? So, the period before the birth of True Father, ito yan siya. So, this is the time of the Japanese colonization period from 1905 to 1945. So, ito yung place ng ano, yung Japanese na ano. Then, First World War. May nag here. So, good. Makarawi. 
Okay? First World War. I will, ano lang today, I will, um, I will make this, ano, fast. Okay? So, the Korean Independence Movement, March 1, 1919. Then this is the first. Then the chosen nation, the chosen nation, Korea. So from our topic um, last week is uh, um, yeah last week forty years preparation from nineteen o five to nineteen forty five. So Korea is to lay the foundation as the chosen nation. So Korea under the colony of Japan, parallel to the history of Israelites, Israelites, four hundred years suffering. Which, no, no. 400 years suffering under Egypt and Christianity's 400 years persecution under Roman Empire. So, ito yun siya. Ano natin to sa topic natin last, ano? Last, um, from the chapter 3. So, early days, from 1920 to 1940, so, as grandfather's Youngest brother, Yung Kuk Moon, um, lived a sacrificial life for the independence of Korea. So he made around, around 70,000 won and 1.4 million dollars of that time and sent to the provis provisional government in the Shanghai in China in 1921. So ito yung ano ni, ano ni, grandfather ni, grandfather ni, father Moon nga, parang bininta nila to yung, <clears throat> uh, what we call this nila, um, Bahay, para mag, um, bininta nila yung parang lupa nila to donate the, this amount of money. So next. So early days in 1920 to 1940. So ito yung ano ng, so grandfather Chi Kuk Moon family and, and <coughs> always proud of his young brother who has a younger brother as a great mind. So, ito yung elder brother ni, ni Father Moon, that Yung Su Moon, it says. Then, the birth of True Father. Pinanganak si True Father noong January 6, 1920, donor calendar. And Yung Myung Moon. Siya. So, before, ito yung, ano, ito yung, ano, um, yung Korea before, ano pa to siya, um, Ito rito. Isa pa to siya, um, what do you call this? Buo pa to siya before, before naga ano, before siya nahati, kaya, be, before nahati is nagkaroon ng ano, because nagkaroon ng 38 parallels, kaya nagkaroon ng ano siya, uh, parang barriers or separation. So ito yung Pyongyang, North Korea. So Seoul, dito si True Father na ano na panganak, then in Tegu, Pusan, then ito yung South, dito na area. Then, Ano to siya tanggalin? True parents, birthplace. So, pinanganak si true parents no, in, in Jongjo, 2,221 in Sangsa, Ri, Dung, Yun, Myun, Gan, Pyonggan, Bok, Do. Then, true mother also, Birth on Anju 26, Shin Oiri, Anju, Anju, Anju Gan, Pyongyang Namdo. Dito si Tro Mother na ano. Nari ni po ba? Then, next. So this is the birthplace of your father. So ito yung ano um ito yung sa mahilig magbabasa sa as peace loving global citizen, di ba? Meron dong nakaano doon sa I forgot the title of that ano. Merong napapakita doon na bird. So ito ito yung bird na special bird of paradise is said to have come and sat on the tree near their house for three years before the birth of father. So para ito yung parang nagbibigay siya ng hint nga Yung si father talaga, prepared talaga siya in this, after, ano, 
before I mean before na panganak si True Father, itong bird na to napapakita to siya um para ito yung parang sign nga ano yung ano Family of Moon. So this village was called Moon Village. So ito yung usually ito yung village nga parang clan nga ni True Father. Lucky. Then her parents visited tears. Her father's hometown in North Korea. It it the father's character, uh, Bobbins, Koryu's inquisitiveness. So, very strong will, a loving and merciful character, a special ability to see affin affinity, an impatient character. So, yun yung ano ni True Father character. Then, next. So, Bobbins, Koryu's and inquisitiveness. It is the True Father, mahilig sa mga ano, mahilig sa mga animals. So, then, yeah, and very strong dish is the father. Then I forgot that name. It's a gitu chinakita Korea. So then the father's character is a uh, The father's family had a motto, never send a hungry person away with an empty stomach. So the father's mother feed poor and hungry people every day. So ito yung ano ni true father. Parang nakuha niya yung sa ano niya. Um, parang unique yung ano ni true father talaga. Yung character, di ba? Kaya niya ibigay sa mga ano. Especially yung heart niya is... Parang yung heart niya talaga is malapit sa mga ano tao. Kung sino yung nangangailangan. So, and the seat through father. Um, next. When our country was controlled by the Japanese, my mother made meals for many people who were fleeing Korea for Manchuria. They were hiding from the Japanese. She would feed 30 or 40 people every day and never complained. And then, to father, then to father's character. Yan, a loving merciful. So, through, ma through ma father's mother's grandmother, Kyung Ki Kim. Ting, ano, true father. Then, a loving and merciful character. This one. Then, the Chungju Public School. It is true father. And during his middle school. So, strong desire for life. In his early teens, I have a strong desire to live a high life, a life of high dimension. At 13, I asked for wisdom, great, greater than Solomon for faith, greater than the Apostle Paul, and for love, greater than the love Jesus. Love Jesus. Love Jesus. Had. Then, ito yung if to father. So, grabe yung ano ni to father talaga. Yung deep nga, ano niya, yung heart talaga niya. Especially in terms of ano, prayer. Kasi naging, ano si Gadik, uh, si to father, kung anong purpose ng ano talaga, no? Um, purpose ng ano ng human or kaya ganon yung ka ano ni true father yung um grabe yung kadip yung ano ni true father yung prayer prayer po so this is the God's calling ito yung time nga si true father um parang dito napapakita si ano si Jesus in the in the mountain then the father received revelation from Jesus in April 17, 1935. So this the father was um 16 years old that time. Yan siya. So ito yung Miodo Mountain. So dito si the father um dito siya sa taas nagpe-pray. So every day talaga siya tapos yun. Yun yung ano niya na, I mean doon siya lagi pupunta pa tapos prayers. So yun yung ano niya um parang daily ano niya daily routine niya at the same time doon niya na ano yung revelation then this one so ito yung reverence sa moon reverence sa moon wrote this when he received the revelation 
When I was 16, I had a special experience on Easter morning while praying deeply from my heart for many hours. Jesus Christ appeared to me and gave me revelations and instructions. Jesus told me many times, many, many very deep and remarkable things. He said that. He told a lot about suffering humankind and that God was sorrowful. He asked me to play a very special role in the history of God here on earth. So, yun yung ano ni, ni Father Moon. So, yun yun. That's what I said earlier. Ito yung revelation that another time. Then, so, my mission to build the kingdom of God on earth is not accomplished by desire in that you, you complete this mission. So it was a difficult decision to make, but true Father who boldly accepted the mission. His name was changed to San Yong Moon, which means the light of truth has come to the Christians. Amon, ayun yung ibig sabi ng ano, name ni True Father. Okay. So, <laughs> ito yung time na si True Father naggawa siya ng po poem. Poem. Crown of Glory. So, um, you still familiar po to sa atin, brothers and sisters, di ba? So, ito siya. I will, re I will read this. When I doubt people, I feel pain. When I, I judge people, it is unbearable. When I hate people, there's no value to my existence. So, yun siya. Yet, if I believe, I am deceived. If I love, I am betrayed. Suffering and grieving tonight, my head and my hands, am I wrong? So, Yes, I am wrong. Even though we are deceived, still believe. Though we are betrayed, still forgive. Love completely even those who hate you. Wipe your tears away and welcome with a smile those who know nothing but this it. And those who betray without regret. So, oh master, the pain of loving. Look at my hands. Place your hand in my chest. My heart is bursting such agony. But when I love those who act against Against me, I brought victory. If you have done the same thing, I will give you the crown of glory. So ito yung ano ni, ano, si Nitro Father written when he was 16 years old. Wow, grabe. In that, ano, in that young age, no? <clears throat> Sorry. In that young age, ito yung ano Nitro Father talaga. Yung crown of glory na po. Then, the, the, the determination of True Father What can discourage my heart? Even if the time changes, even if my hair turns white, turns white, my heart with the determination to bravely and bravely and with dignity go forward to accomplish the mission for God will not change. So yun ang ano ni Father, yung determination niya nga. Even though nga, yung heart niya is ano um nag, do, na, ah, even do yung ano ni true father talaga nagkaroon na siya ng ano bravely and dignity to go forward to accomplish yung mission niya gin, ano, ni Jesus kad na gin reveal then early days in 1920 to 1940 so preparation ito yung preparation niya to um receive so this is the period of junior high school in in Seoul, the beginning of faith and effort 1938 to March 8, 1941 to 19 to 22 years old. So a three years at the electrical department of Kyongsang Technical School. So ito yung ano ni ano ni to father. Then life of voluntarily suffering. So the experience heavily fathers Shim Jung. Building his character for the accomplishment of taking dominion over himself. Only two meals a day until 30 years old. Fasting on his birthdays. To know, to know the feelings of the ones with hunger. So yun yun siya. Yung si True Father talaga mahilig siya sa, ano, sa mga, mga volunt volunteering or ano, yung mga suffering. Uh, ang sa kanya lang is makatulong siya. Diba? And then, in my middle school days, I did not eat lunch, not because I had no money, but because I wanted to know how the hungry felt. Also, I did not eat um, 
lunch because there was no food. I did that because I did not I did that because I felt I had to train myself during the normal days of my life. So, yun. I did sit to father na ano na skip before ng ano ng pagkain para ma-feel niya yung ano parang uh, ma-feel niya yung yung mga tao nga hindi um kumakain at the same time yung normal ano normal life then at lunch so at lunch time it was very difficult to control my desire for food while my friends ate their lunches i sat in a remote corner not eating just meditating it was a serious serious place. So, yun. Habang yung mga friends ni True Father is nag, ano sila, nag kumakain. Si True Father naman may siya sa ano, meditation or gamiditate siya lagay. Yung, in that time nga, um, time na mga, uh, yeah, in that time nga, parang, um, ito, meal time nga, yun na si True Father, mag-gamiditate siya. Parang gano'n ano, niya yung time nga, mag, ano, mag, connect kay God. Then, so period of junior high school in Seoul, walk down to walk downtown, which was a 10 kilometers distance to eat the poor by saving his transportation. Wow. So, ito yung ganito yung father. Ginatis niya yung maglakad na siya ng 10 kilometers distance para lang maipon niya yung pera. Para maibigay niya sa mga poor na, ma, na ano, poor na mga yun, mga tao. At the same time, makatulang siya. So, when his tuition was sent from his parents, father gave it to the poor and managed his living expenses and tuition through his part-time job. So, yun. Ginanot ni through father nga um what do you call this? Uh, yun, yung pera nga binibigay sa kanya ng parents niya, ginaanan niya, ginaipon niya para lang ma, ano, Ah, uh, yun nga, as what I've said earlier, nga para lang maibigay sa mga mm, poor nga tao, the same time makatulong siya. Then, nagkakaroon pa si father ng part-time job. Then, next one, yes. at a school in Seoul in 1940, ito yung mga father, classmates. Then, yung Sudi Church, ito yung first na church. Sorry, palubat. So, ito yung first ng church na sinali, sinalihan ni True Father, Myung Sodi Church. And then, ito yung church group ni In Seoul ni True Father. Then, Father says that, I remember one day walking from Hoksondong to Seoul Station in the summer. All my friends used the street cars when they went, but I walked. I thought, I'm different. I should not go this way. When I got to the train station, I gave that money to the big horse and I prayed for them saying, although I can give them only a small amount of money, this make the day come that the big horse of this nation, this nation can have a day of liberation. So, yun yun siya, no? Yun nga, yung ano ni True Father sa Korea, di ba yung, um, kung sino yung nakapunta niya ng Korea, di ba, um, must, kaya, yung mga para na restore na nitro father yung ano mga bigas wala masyadong mga bigas do, doon sa Korea actually kasi ano na siya sa ano pa lang nitro father nung bata pa lang si nitro father yung nga sa middle school pa nitro father yung ano niya talaga is parang um parang na liberate na yung mga ano mga bigas so parang less na sila ngayon or wala nang wala halos wala ka nang makita na ano bigas sa sa Korea then um study abroad in 1941 to 1943 and then she was in the university of japan ito yun siya, so in 1941 spring entered electrical engineering course at was the industrial high school ito yung ano nitro father of course niya electrical engineering then study abroad okay search for the um Study abroad in 1941 to 1943, so two years of preparation. So, schoolmate of true father and early follower, Doc Moon Om, says that I saw Japanese, Korean, and English Bibles on his desk, underlined and filled with many notes. So, si true father talaga, dati, uh, si true father talaga, mahilig siya mag-sulat, no, mag and then, 
marami ang nga magsulat na siya magsulat ng at saka mahilig siya mag-study ng mga different na ano na klase ng bibles mga islam buddhism or uh, yan ibang ano ang klase so this one ito yung mga ano ni true father before oh mga notes niya then father says that I have spent shedding tears continuously without sleep for over a week to search to search whether God exists or not. So, yun. Where God, which I want to see exists, I have had such a serious situation many times. Day after day, I continuously wipe my eyes, become swollen and painful like too much ripened pumpkin because the tears poured out. I could not even open my eyes to the sunlight and I spent with my eyes closed. So, yun. Yun si True Father. So, ano, yun yun si, um, yeah, that's what ano, True Father nga, because of, um, gano yung ano ni True Father, kulang yung ano niya sa tulog, kaya usually, kahit um, nakapikit si True Father, pero still, nag-ano pa rin siya yung, ano tawag dito, still nag-ano pa rin siya, nag kahit nakaklose yung mata ni True Father, kasi yun nga sa, because of the ano because of you know study ni true father at the same time wala na siyang ano magrest so yung mata niya pag lalabas siya especially pag sunlight parang ano siya kanang mahap di so lagi si true father naka close ng eyes pag ano uh, pag lumalabas siya naka close then yun parang maana siya through ano na tawag dito uh, yun <laughs> then study uh, Yan sa so principle, underground resistant anti-Japanese activity. So ito na yung sinastart, yung self-discipline. So control yourself before you control the cosmos. Control the physical desire, experience everything from the lowest to the highest standard of the life. Confronted a group leader of the factory for exploiting workers. He studied in a noisy factory and in, and in railroad yard to improve his concentration, sleep outdoors. Grew up in a newspaper in the winter. Then, then return and end of war in 1943 to 1945. So, two years. So, the time when his father was in prison. So, first imprisonment of his father in early 1944, an electrical engineer at Kashima Guni. In 1944, arrested by Kyung Gido police for his anti Japanese activities in Japan. Ito, dito yung the time si ano, si her father na. Um, torture, so pouring water. Uh, it means yung yung <coughs> at I call this yung tubig na parang pinapasok sa ilong. Di ba masakit yun siya? So yun yung ano first na torture ni the father. Then electric shock. Um, yung sa kamay, tama ba? Ah, oh, yun sa kamay ginano yung ano sa electric shock. Kami and then. Yung a square stick inside his knees. Yung stick, ginalagay sa ano niya, di ba? Tapos, gina, ano siya, gina, parang ginag-jump yung ano niya, yung knees niya. So, ito yung ano siya talaga, yung, um, yung ano ni True Father. Then lastly, hanging in the air. So, parang ano, yun, ginahang siya sa air, si True Father. So, ito yung ano talaga, yung pag, uh, what do you call this? It, ito yung first imprisonment nga, ano, torture ni True Father sa Japan nga, probably yung ano nila. To father. So, ito yung picture. So, yan. Then, President of the Russian of Korea, then World War II. Ito yung nag-start ang World War II, 1941 to 1945. 45. World War Level Foundation for the Messiah to start his mission. Liberated this chosen nation, Korea, for the Messiah to accomplish his task. Ito yan. Then, ito yung natapos yung end then next, surrender of Japan in August 15, 1945. Ito yung si, si father. So, in, in, during, uh, in, in August 15, 1945, nagkaroon ng independence of Korea. Then, yan, nag-shot na sila ng mansay, 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 for that. So, di ba ito yung ano ni true father, nagsulat si true father nga, love your enemy. When Japan was defeated at the time of World War II, I contacted all of my former torturers one night and told them that they faced great danger if they remained in Korea. Then I helped put their luggage on their vehicle and sent them off. 
although Japan has been an enemy country up until that time, I knew that it would become a brother in the future because of God's will. So, ang heart ito, Father, no, even though uh, yung mga nag-torture sa kanya, meron, meron pa siyang anong tawag dito, parang, an, ano talaga yung heart ito, Father, ka-unique, di ba? Karabi heart ito, Father. So, ginano niya pa, gin-contact niya pa yung nag-torture sa kanya, nga, tinulungan niya pa nga, mag anong tawag dito, nga, yun, meron silang, ano nga, danger, so tinulungan niya pa mag ano yung gamit ni, gamit na mga kasama. So, yun nga, as what the Father says, that love your enemy. So, ito yung, <clears throat> sorry, ito yung time nga, ano siya, ito yung nagkakaroon ng, nagkar- uh, after nagka- nasulat ni Father yung letter na yun, nagkakaroon tayo ng United Nations. So, external preparation, world level foundation for the Messiah to start his mission centering on Christianity. So, di ko na ito masyad, ano, kasi a bit later. Then, <clears throat> internal preparation, Korea Tribal Missile Spiritual Group of Christianity. So, ito yung mga Ano yung mga strong, um, I forget this story, then, then Korea, then USA, then the world. So, in 1945, at the moment when the Christian culture achieved the unified world, Unified World I was prepared to proclaim that I am the Lord of the Second Coming. In the role of bride, the Christian nations were to receive my message. Western Christians had reached deep into Korea and were aware of my work. <clears throat> so, ito yung ano, founder of the Israel Jesus Church, Kim Big Moon. Ito yun siya. Then, in 1945, Israel Monastery entered the Israel Monastery of Abbot Big Moon Kim. In 19... In, Reverend Moon as a world level King Solomon. So, St. Providence centered on female group in the North, fem- North Female Spiritual Group is received revelations. They were wife of God. So, 1946, God instructed TF to go to North Korea. So, that's why I'm going to feel your Then, and you know, failure of 1945. So, as, as what I've said earlier, so, nagkaroon ng 38 parallels. So, nagkaroon ng division of the Korean Peninsula. So, nagkaroon ng North and South Korea. Then, third imprisonment. Ito yung pangatlong ano nitro father. <clears throat> arrested by the Tidong police on the charge of being a spy from the south. Then Reverend Moon was beaten firstly in some crane dance. Then 1946, Reverend Moon was thrown out on the snow. So, grabe yung ano eh. Grabe yung pag ano kay True Father. Even though nga, yun, grabe, I mean yung jealousy. What I mean? If, um, I am, if I'm not mistaken, jealousy yung tawag mo. So, even when I was tortured in a prison, I first thought of these circumstances of the circumstance in which God Himself must go such path before thinking of the fact that He commanded me to go. Then, then in the heart of restoration. Then, so at the Father's prayer, even in times of torture, I did not panic even at the moment when I threw up much blood fell to the floor and almost died and I prayed to God to deliver me from my enemies and alleviate my suffering. Instead, I prayed, God, your will shall be done. I will live and die as a courageous son. I shall never let suffering stop me. I will go on the so please just watch me because God knew my suffering so well I could pray in no other manner. Then Father continued to preach God's words in the north. Then, yun naman, ulit na ulit naman. In 1948, tatlong beses siya si True Father na ano, na, ito yung tatlong beses siya na ano, na arrest naman. So, court imprisonment in 
arrested siya, then trial and conviction, five years in senten sentence for the crime of having disturbed the social order, then transferred to yung non prison. If you see ano yung non prison, di ba ito yung story ng ito yung mga na prison nga parang 30 per, 30% to 50% nga ma may ma ano maka survive itong yung non prison na to. So reverence mon's mind from this message, <clears throat> I thought from now I will be able to reveal the real power of God's son. Ito yung sana dito father na sa ano niya minds niya from his message. So ito yung yung nam prison camp. So to father dito to reader si to father uh, two years to father dito so ano more to yun nga as with 30 to 40 percent so ang ano nila doon is he heavily labor then scarcity of food malaria. So uh, yun nga scarcity of food then so yun pag hin um Yung mga ito yung kasama ni True Father na pag hindi ano inapakan ng mga ano sila. Ang tawag ito, sundalo. So, True Father showed the power of true love in young nang prison. The Bible says, those who wish to die shall live and those who wish to live shall die. This teaches us the way to true love. Those who are not ready to die for others cannot follow the road of true love. Even while going to prison and justly, I went with a victorious feeling in my heart. God protects you when you live to follow what is right. Then, ito siya sa Amon um, Soul Faith Factory. So, yun yung, yung binubuhat nila na ito, Father, ano siya, um, parang mga fertilizer. Yun. Fertilize, fertilizer yung ano nila, ginabuhat nila. So, ito yung ano, in one team, 1,300 bags in 8 hours. So, imagine mo na sa 8, ano, sa 8 hours na yan. So, sabihin ta lang sa isang team, sampo sila. So, ilan-ilan sila in every, ano, in every tao. Oh, di ba? Ang iba hindi nakaya. So, si True Father yung nag, ano, nag, pero nag-comply. So, True Father's standard of life, each had to load 130 bags, di ba? So, kasi sa, ano, sila eh, 10, in one team, three, um, sampo sila. So, each had to load 130 bags daily. <laughs> Reverend Moon accomplished half of the task of one team by himself. Reverend Moon determined to survive on half of his meal. To maintain health, Reverend Moon learned his body with one cup of water given to each prisoner. So, yun ang kay True Father nga. Nagagawa ni True Father yung, ano, yung hold, uh, para sa ano niya, sa wandi niya, parang yung capacity ng ano niya, yun ang nagagawa niya, ano, para um, sa isang TV, isang, eh, sorry, sa isang TV, isang ka, eh, um, one day ni True Father yan, yung capacity ni True Father yung nagawa. Then, Yung food nila, so instead nga ano siya parang isang bowl, so kahit father isa lang, so parang ginagive niya nga para sa iba. Then, learn his body with one cup of water. So, yan, pinibigyan sa kanila ng half cup of water. Then, true father standard of life, prayer three times a day for members. Then, heavenly dignity, took his seat, her the toilet to so so the prisoner don't step over his body, which is God's body. So the father don't step the father na tutulog sa ano tao dito um, toilet, di ba? Then give give ever every gift he received to other prisoner. So yung nareceive niyang gift, binibigay niya pa sa iba. So model labor prize. Yun yung ano ni the father. Then yun. Sure. Father, an embodiment of true love. So when I was in young prison, members visited me once a month with rice that had been made into a powder. There were 30 people in the room with me, so I could not give each person very much. I poured one spoonful of powder onto a piece of newspaper and gave it to each of them. I didn't eat it alone. I would never eat it myself. On those days when I shared the rice powder, it was like a party for us. Also, I wore the most rag clothes all the time. I give my good clothes to other men. When visitors give me clothes, I give them to the most precious men. When my own clothes work out, I made a needle from wood and sewed them. So, yun yung ano ni True Father na nagtatahin siya. So, yun yung mga sila. Then, so, Jung Wapak, fellow freshman of Yongnam Prison, 
I felt so hungry I couldn't sleep. Many times I thought of stealing other people's rice powder. So, Teacher Moon always shared his. So, si Trupader lagi siyang pinapadala ng food ni, ng, mother ni, ng mother niya. So, binibigay din ni Trupader. And, so, I felt how this spirit important it was to control my own mind. I considered that half of my regular meal was enough and the other half was extra given by God. So, Present camp in 1948 to 1950, trial, daily conditions, standard of life followers. So, fellow person, yung nam, yung wap pak, one night, an old man appeared to me in a dream and clearly told me that young man is the one you've been looking for since your childhood. Two days later, the young man turned to me and said, You had a dream two nights ago, didn't you? I was shocked. So, yun yun siya. Kasi to father. Then, si, ang ano naman ni, um, ni Enho Kim, crossing over the borderline, I am neither a unification member nor a Christian, but I cannot re forget the impression Sun Ming Moon made upon me. He was a man of vision and principles, one who was always true to his words. So, yun si to father. Um, maraming nagano sa kanya, parang naghanga ba? Kasi despite nga si to father nandun siya sa, ano, sa prison, um, yung ano ni to father pala, um, uh, yung heart niya, despite nga mag, the way siya magano sa mga kasama niya is parang, yun, parang, yung, yung love niya ba as parang, tumatayo siyang as a parent, parang ano. So, liberation in 1950, outbreak of Korean War in June 25, 1950. Then, liberation. So, 1950, Korean War began attack on Yunnan by B-29 bombers. Yun Army landed at Incheon. Yun Army 16 nation, 16 nations bomb Yunnan. So 1950, 2 a.m. Reverend liberation, the foundation of 12 disciples in the prison. Jesus appeared in the sky. So ito yung that time, uh, yun nga, nabumba yung ano, yung yung Yunnan, ano, Yung nam, yun nga, sa yung nam, so ito yung si True Father nga nakalabas, si True Father. Then, yan, ito yung sinasalabawan, so nagtulong. So, sa mga kasama, Jesus appeared in the sky, sa mga kasama ni, I forgot the name, sa mga kasama ni True Father, ito yung na, na picture up dito sa, sa clouds, ito yung shape ng, um, parang nagpapayawate ba, si, si Jesus, um, yung nga, picture, parang picture siya na yung ano ni Jesus, so kaya nako na, na nila na, Ito yung parang way or ito yung uh, nag si Jesus sa sky. So, early follower Won Pil Kim, during the 10-day journey, he ate from routine leftover scraps, saving a small bag of rice flour. Reverend Mon wanted to give gift to his followers. Even after the ordeal, he had undergone of Hongnam in, at Hongnam. So, yan. Then, liberation in Hifuti, outbreak of war, then search for followers, journey in south. So, yun yung ano ni True Father. Then, Journey to the South. Ito yan siya. Hindi ko maano may pasay kung saan dito yung ano. So, Korea nakasulat. Then, next, Journey to, so, yun na, to the South. Yeah, well, this one. First. So, ito yun. Dito nasulat ni ano. Journey, before nag ano si, si True Father, nag-deep sa yung ng prison, ito yung nasulat niya, Blessing of Glory. Ito yung kanta na page number one. So, from the dark of death, I awaken and rejoice to live in grace. So, ito, the one who came to save me, holds me tenderly in his embrace. So, how can I return to blessing? Though it all my life, I will try. I can never stop feeling how unworthy am I. I can never stop feeling how unworthy I am. Ah, yeah. So, crossing the sea, ito yun siya. Si, ito yung, ano, kasi ni True Father, yung kasama niya na si Unpil nga, gikere niya, ito yung parang pilay. Uh, then, yeah, nag-cross sila sa Kinjin River. After na ni True Father, nag-cross pa din that river, ano siya na sila, siya yung nabubad. So, movement begins in 1951 to 1954. Refugees' lives, settled in Pusan. And it is hot made from mud bricks and cardboard boxes in Pusan in 1951. <clears throat> okay. 
bilis lang lang. With early followers. So, ito pala yung ano, ito pala yung first nga church na gawa ni, ni True Father. Made by, ano siya, um, mud. Uh, ayun nga, putik. Siya, putik. So, yan. Putik at saka cardon. Then, ito yung, yung mga start nga, ano ni True Father, yung followers ni True Father. And the followers. Then, Reverend Mon, Won, Phil, Kim, and two other early followers on a hilltop in 1954. So, ito yung The Rock of Tears. Kung sino yung nakakapunta doon sa Rock of Tears sa Korea. So, yun. Sa Pusan. So, yan. Father's Prayer. Then, Reverend Moon. His life until now has been filled with tears day and night. Every day, every, may, every year, I would pray to God. If I can stop you tears and save humankind from a miserable fate by missioning tears, I don't mind shedding any amount of tears. I prayed like this to God all the time, no matter how miserable a situation I was put in. I never shed tears for myself. Ito yan. So, ito, so, yan. Father persevered for God's providence time and again. I have persevered even when that seems certain. The only reason I did not lose courage in such circumstances was that I have deep, deep communication of heart with God. Oh, God always softly whispered His advice to me. He was the motivation for my life. He was life itself. So I answered the Father. Then, when Phil wrote that during those early days, Reverend Moon always seemed to be cry crying every morning and night. He would pray in tears often four hours at a time. He would pray for each individual member three times a day. So, yun ang ano nito, Father. Yan, Diventan si Paul. Then, yan, um, 1951, Reverend Moon started writing the Divine Principle. Then, 1952, Reverend Moon finished writing the Divine Principle. And Miss Yun Shil Kong, an evangelist, meet Reverend Moon. So, witnessing and take go. Te and 1964, move to Seoul. Okay. So, ito yung naso that ito, Father, Grace of the Holy Garden. Then, yan. Siya. And then, movement begins in 1951. Then, oh, dito yung naboyo in 1954. The boy, ang um, first na ano ni True Father yung um, nagawa niya is, I mean, yung napangalan niya sa church is Holy Spirit Association for Reunification of World Christianity. So, HSA, WC was founded in 1954. So, I will, ano, this one. So, ito yung, ano siya, um, yung uh, HSA, ito yung na, ano, na, mas familiar sa patawag na Unification Church Headquarters. Ito yung, ano, ni True Father, first nga. Ano na niya gawa. So ito yun, sa so, nakapunta doon sa Seoul, siyang pa doon para ito yun siyang uh, anam na bahay. So yun, or before, okay, Julius, the uh, in, in, former. So yun yung mga subject stuff. Then, the father. So young Reverend Moon's teaching had an impact to a thunder and lightning. The spread well in this environment was like a kind of electricity. It would even sometimes cure physical disease as well as bring many spiritual insights in uh, the para uh, sarak of ano sila of your sweetest father <clears throat> so listen ka lang so the ay the ay woman's university yes is kin yang ah uh, yun yang yang a professor of music witness many students and professors mrs won pok choi the, the the dean of student affairs in the law and government school in joint doctor doctor yang yang won kim a professor of theology joined nag join sa kahit dun sa ano sa church so 40 students were expe na expelled sila kasi nagano sila kay true father ito yun sila then Okay, I will have Because So, fifth imprisonment, Reverend Moon was arrested on the charge of holding people against their will and of drop evasion. So, na paano naman sa father? Pasag ni Dan ko sa Bisa yata. Then, yan. So, Reverend Moon was proclaimed innocent and released siya sa 1960. So, Mrs. Mary Fox family joined. Yeah, naka, ano, na uh, yung, ano, na siya, patak, 
pataan ba sa ano sa Bisaya. I forgot yun talaga ano. So yun siya na 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 Then, so family foundation in 1960 to 1967. And you prepare the father to, uh, no, to meet the daughter to mother. Then, to mother, Mrs. Hak Jan Moon, 1943, on January 6th, donor calendar, Andrew Pyongyang, Nam Korea. Mother, Mrs. Son E. Yu Hong, the Monim, single daughters for three generations, Holy Lord Church, inside Belly Church. The Satan stuck with your daughter revelation. So this child is the daughter of the Lord. So the way the true mother of all humanity, mother had to restore the failure of Eve and so that faith and loyalty to God as his daughter. So a victorious standard is the spouse of Adam, her husband. A victorious standard is true mother of all humanity. So ito yung ano nila na ito. Parents, yung blessing nila. Marriage in March 17, 1960. Um, so ito yung reverend is um, wedding nila, then uh, ibilisan ko lang tayo. Uh, okay, so most epic channel to share. So blessing establishing God's lineage in 1960. Yung first native father nga na napabless his father is three couples from 1960, March. Then Next, na napabliss is 33 couples. Second is 72 couples. Then, 1963, 124 couples. Then, ito yung first blessing. Ito yung 36 couples. 124 and 130. Then, family, from, family foundation in 1960 to 1967. Uh, na na nito, father, yung mga special holidays. So, 1960, Parents' Day and... Children's Day, the Day of All Things. So, in 1968, God's Day Family Level 4 Position Foundation entered into the sphere of God's direct dominion. The next, uh, so the human, the human fall came in the top of the growth stage. Therefore, the seven years mother and I went through together with a period to cross into the completion stage in which I could restore and establish Parents' Day, Children's Day, Day of All Things, and God's Day. Okay, the answer of family to father. So, early forward to one clock, I have known Reverend Moon for over 30 years. I have witnessed the intensity of his communi communication with God and the spiritual power that results from it. So, I think I'm going to reach your father. That's the foundation 1968 to 1964. Then, the International Federation for Victory of War Communism was established. So, Reverend Moon in USA to revive on December 7, 18, 1971. So, so Reverend at the USA to restore the Lost Foundation of Korea Christianity through connecting the world with spiritual foundation of Christianity to Korea. So, so yun siya. Um, I, ano ka na lang? So, yeah. Uh, forgive love and unite. Dito na sa Nature Father. So, you don't. Kunti na lang siya, mostly blessing na lang po ito siya. So, ito yung ano actually, um, ito yung early members in the Mandaluyong Church headquarters in the Philippines. Ito yun siya. Then, ito yung headquarters. So, present Philippine Church headquarters, Summer Avenue, Quezon City. So, before ang ano, dito ngayon, so ito yung church, um, the birth of Philippine Unification Church in 1976. Philippine government officially recognized Unification Church in the Philippines in September 13, 1976. 1980 Unification Church was the registered officially as the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of, of World Christianity or HSA to AWC. So, yun siya. Um, so, yung mga books to Father. So, God bless America, Washington. So, everyone speaking of Washington, DC. So, I will not another individual because so yun. Where should I punch you? I just get service, RYS, and Kausa. That was in the last three years, conclude the 40 years. So this is the end. So, yung Jin Mo and Reverend Mo, second son killed in an auto accident, at an accident in 1984. So, um, 
the day of victory of love, nineteen eighty four, love overcome that. Young Jinim overcome the fear of death, Reverend and Mrs. Moon, true favorites overcome the sorrow of death. So in nineteen eighty four, the world song was a many of Young Jinim. So thank you. So yeah. Congresses of Reverend's connection, prejudice of white people toward minorities, the prejudice of existing Christianity and just toward Unification Church, the indirect plot of the international communities to stop the activity of evil. So additionally, the Jews were the prosecutors. Yeah. Then, the young six time uh, imprisonment father in 1984. Reverend Moon, I will move in, uh, which is a issue to a Dunbury prison. Reverend Moon and Mr. Kamiyama entered prison in Dunbury, Connecticut. Reverend Moon was released from the halfway house, God and Freedom Banquet in DC. So it's the town in 1984 to 1985. Then, so today I am going the route to inca incarceration and I am asking God, what is your next chapter for me? Let your will be done and bring the unity of all mankind. Centering upon the true parents, I know that matter where I go, I will find people who will follow strangers, will follow me even beyond the unification church. Not to father, so to father taken in Kamiyama in prison in Danbury. Okay, I'm making it for okay. So, so Reverend Moon's life in Danbury from the servant of servant of clothes, blanket, etc. The life as the singer in the prison never prayed from, for help, instead, comforted God. Um, see if number complete. Um, Complaints. The server, the kitchen work, the last, the one, the last one to finish the work did every small work which others generally hated to do. Man of prayer, man of study, God's word. Ito yung anonit of father. Life niya sa Danbury. Interview. Then project from Danbury Unification of UC and the Institution Churches Reverend Moon Center. Hundred thousand deep tapes to all ministers in the U.S. So. There were 7,800 mysteries that entered the ADP workshop in Korea, which began on April 10, 1985, and was held in every 10 days. Support of free fighters in Nicaragua through Washington Times, Reverend Moon announced to support $40 million. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dumb. So, so at the end of the of Communist Foundation in 1985. Okay, I will not ano na tong. this one. So, ito yun siya. Ito yung sinasabi kanina ng Love Your Enemy. Ito yung ano. Um, ito yung sa North Korean nga na presidency. Kim Il-sung. So, father meeting the president. Yan. December 6, 1991. North Korea. So, parents and press Kim Il-sung. Future mother. So, ito yung world scripture. So, a comparative ato atology of sacred text. So, world is sculpture. So, mga lahat ng mga religious, um, what they call this, mga religious na mga leaders, ito yung pinag-study niya ni Father. So, dito nakasulat yung mga ano. Nasulat siya. World Foundation in 1985 to 1992. So, ito is true mother na establish yung uh, Women's Federation for World Peace. So, okay. Yan. First, then. Ito tayo. So, Family Federation. So, then, so established kingdom of then world the foundation 1993 to 1990 um 1999 the completed the age where culture is part festival of the blessing so the general of this role of true mother cosmic expansion of the church of the blessing salvation and spirit world then she says champion heaven and earth entering center to yung champion so nakapunta ng champion so ito yan then and six million couples, then everyone appreciate at the marriage of second time, 60 million couples in front of anything. So, mostly this one is blessing, Natasha. So, I will not know. Um, yeah, that's um, for listening. <laughs> so, yun siya, so, so at this moment, hello brothers and sisters, saan po ba kayo? 
Brothers and sisters, nandiyan po ba kayo po? Yes. Yes po, nandito pa po yes, kami. kami. Okay, um, um, I will, it's okay, um, uh, before we proceed to our, um, yun, movie, let's have a video pala, sorry. Um, let's have a three minutes break, kasi meron pa, mahaba pa yung movie na to. Okay, please return in at five, ay, I'm sorry, 8.53, Okay. Brothers and sisters, okay. let's take a break. One almost one hour yung ano natin break. Thank you so much po. I'll see you in uh, Okay, good evening, elders, brothers, and sisters. Let's continue for our video. Part for our two parents, like, course. Let me share again my screen. Yan. Nakikita po ba? Kita siya si Jake. Okay po ba, brothers and sisters? Hindi ko na ano eh. Clear po ba? Yes, yes. Yes. Hello, one hour? Oh? Oh? Okay. Okay. One, two, three. So, one hour. Okay. Enjoy, brothers and sisters. Peace. vast universe, beautiful earth, the dream of a peaceful, ideal world. This is the long-cherished dream of God and humanity. In the shoes of a servant, with the heart of the parents, shedding sweat for earth, tears for humanity, and blood for heaven. The man who has spent his entire life for God's homeland, Reverend Sun Myung Moon, 
Reverend Moon is now revered as the true parent to humanity, the savior to the world, the king of peace of the cosmos, and the model saint before heaven. Without him, there would be no Washington Times, and I think it's appropriate that we pay our respects to him. I respect Reverend Moon with all my heart. I wish for God's will to be fulfilled. The activities of Reverend Moon is very important. I think that uh, Father Anderson Moon stands as a great example of the unity of the family. <laughs> Ten months after the 3.1 Korean independence movement, Reverend Moon was born in Jeongju of Pyongan Bokdo on January 6, 1920. Reverend Moon was a boy full of curiosity. He befriended nature, spending his days roaming the mountains and rivers. He was also quite mature, always thinking of others before himself. However, the nation was groaning in misery under the Japanese rule. His hometown, Jeongju, was on the path of refugees running toward Manchuria. Reverend Moon's family was renowned for giving charity to those in need. His great-grandfather even left a saying, if you feed people from all over the nation, the blessings of the nation will come to you. And thus, Reverend Moon's house became a place where the refugees tired from their journey could stop to eat food and rest. Having been raised with this kind of family tradition, from his early childhood, Reverend Moon couldn't ignore other people's pain and suffering. He often gave sacks of his family's rice to the refugees passing by his home. He understood that he needed new knowledge in order to reclaim the nation. And so, he entered Osan School and transferred the following year to Jeongju Public School. Influenced by his grandfather, Yoon Kuk Moon, who was a pastor and also an independence activist, Reverend Moon's love for religion and his country grew. At the age of 16, young Reverend Moon lost five of his 13 siblings. Grieving the death of his siblings and friends, and for the suffering of the nation, the young boy at 16 years of age went up a mountain alone to seek answers from God. 
On the dawn of Easter morning in 1935, the boy who prayed in tears all night long met Jesus in spirit. When I doubt people, I feel pain. When I judge people, it is unbearable. When I hate people, there is no value to my existence. But when I loved those who acted against me, I brought victory. If you have loved as I have, I will give you the crown of glory. His determination on this day to accomplish God's will became the force that drove him for his entire life. The young Reverend Moon became a completely different person after that Easter morning. He spoke less and spent more time in deep contemplation. When he turned 18 in 1938, he went to Huxokdong in Seoul. Homestay in an unfamiliar land, far away from his hometown for the first time. He entered Kyungsung Commercial School with a major in electricity, which was the cutting edge field of study at the time. Going to school on weekdays and to church on the weekends, he sought out the will of heaven and fundamental principles of the universe. His Bible worn to tatters from his study and his tears from deep prayers soaked the floor. He cried because the pain and sorrow of God and Jesus touched his heart. In 1941, Reverend Moon went to Japan for further study. Thinking that learning about Japan thoroughly would help the liberation of his nation, he entered Waseda University and majored in electrical engineering. Apart from his studies, he voluntarily experienced the lowest kinds of life through working at a dockyard and experienced the highest standards of life by sometimes sleeping at luxurious hotels. In such ways, he trained himself vigorously. Under his motto, one must govern himself before desiring the dominance of the universe, Reverend Moon worked to unite his mind and body. At the same time, he was very active in an underground independence organization created amongst Korean students. <laughs> Reverend Moon constructed the main frame of Heaven's Word before the liberation. His preparation to soar through the sky was complete. However, because of his liberation activities, he was captured by the Japanese police. His bones were crushed, his flesh torn as he was tortured brutally. In 1945, the liberation finally came. The tragedy of losing what they once owned, having their children taken away to the Japanese army, the pain of oppression. The sorrow of Korean people during these 40 years was exactly what God had been going through. God, who was ripped of everything by Satan, chained by pain and sorrow for 6,000 years, The God Reverend Moon discovered was not the omnipotent God who casts judgment. God had excruciating sorrow as he was unable to do anything but watch as his dream of heaven on earth shattered to pieces. It was the parent whose heart had been burnt black from losing his begotten son.
God's sorrowful heart. Reverend Moon became determined to liberate God from Satan's shackles and put him back on his rightful throne. This was the promise he made with heaven. Reverend Moon's public life began. He was 26 years old. He began searching for spiritual Christian sects and worked to spread the will of God and the new truth. The joy of Korea's liberation was cut short. The nation was divided into North and South at the 38th parallel line. In 1946, when refugees journeyed South seeking freedom, Reverend Moon went up north, remaining obedient to heaven's command. People who were thirsting for heaven's new words of truth came to Reverend Moon, and his number of followers expanded rapidly. In 1946 and 1948, because of local Christian churches' slanders and the North Korean communist regime's religious persecution, Reverend Moon was arrested twice and dragged to Daedong security office, being charged as being a spy from South Korea. Reverend Moon endures more gruesome torture. Even through his suffering and anguish, Reverend Moon endures the torture by lamenting for God all the pain he had to go through. <laughs> Pitomodigatung的 after two and a half months of deadly torture, he was sent to a forced labor camp called Hungnam Fertilizer Factory, this time charged with disrupting the peace and order of society. It was backbreaking labor, starting at 4.30 in the morning to fill 1,300 bags of fertilizer in one day. The camp was a place of no return. Even in such a hellish environment, Reverend Moon shared his food with others and took care of his inmates, which gave him the title Prison Saint. On June 25, 1950, Reverend Moon was in the camp when the tragedy of the Korean people began. October 14th of the same year was the day he was to be executed. The North Korean army planned to retreat and began killing the inmates systematically. However, Hungnam's gates were opened due to the bombing of the United Nations forces. Reverend Moon left the camp with his new followers. It was two years, eight months after being incarcerated. Forty years later, on December 6, 1991, Reverend Moon met Kim Il-sung in that very place of death. He talked about the peace of Korea with the very person who sought to kill him. Now, Reverend Moon gives financial support to charity and hosts cultural sports exchange more than any other religious organizations or business companies in South Korea. 
Reverend Moon's true love embraced even his enemy, who tried to take his life. Just like the story of Jacob embracing his brother Esau with love in order to indemnify the sins of Cain and Abel, Reverend Moon used this same philosophy in interacting with North Korea. Reverend Moon visited his hometown in Jungju. As he laid his eyes on his hometown, deep grief was filled his eyes. After meeting with his remaining family and laying flowers on his parents' graves, thoughts of true love being the only hope filled his being. Reverend Moon's foundation in North Korea blossomed through the Little Angels performance later in Pyongyang and plays the role of acting as a hotline whenever there is tension between North and South Korea. On December 4, 1950, 40 days after he arrived in Pyongyang, he decided to head south. His body was battered after the long imprisonment and forced labor. But he made it out of North Korea, even while carrying one of his followers on his back. After two months of traveling, Reverend Moon settled in Bumnekol, Busan. On May 11th of the same year, Reverend Moon began writing The Divine Principle. The Divine Principle reveals the most fundamental principles of God, humanity, and the universe. It explains the entire providential process beginning from God's creation of humanity, their fall, and God's providence to restore them. On May 10, 1952, when Reverend Moon was 33, the original Divine Principle was completed. It took one year to complete. On that day, a female missionary from a local church came to visit Reverend Moon in his mud hut. She came intending to convert Reverend Moon, but was converted by him instead. In 1954, the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity was founded in Pukakdong, Songdonggu, Seoul. Reverend Moon had sought out Christian churches, but they only persecuted him for their misunderstanding. Because of their disbelief of the prepared foundation, he had to start anew, putting new wine in new wineskins. He had to make a new beginning to pioneer a new heaven, new earth, and new age. Reverend Moon's words spread like wildfire in the universities. Especially two mission schools, Yonsei and Iwa Women's University, were at the center of this whirlwind. Why couldn't the omnipotent God prevent the fall of man and all the misery throughout history? Was Jesus destined to be crucified? When, where, and how will the Lord come? The headquarters church at Chongpadong, which was then called Seoul Church, was crowded with people who came with these kinds of questions. Reverend Moon would speak with such fervor that his clothes would be drenched with sweat and cried tears of blood as he prayed, and so the congregation would break out in wailing. The Seoul Church was nicknamed the Wailing Church. As its influence expanded, the persecution by the Christian Church became greater, and even the media started accusing the Unification Church of being a cult. <laughs> 부청장 박마리아 씨였어요. 그러니까는 신문이 그냥 며칠 후에 후딱 바뀌어 버렸어. 막뭐 우리를 갖다 음란한 집단이다. 뭐 벌거벗고 춤을 춘다. 뭐 파, 가정을 파괴하는 집단이다. 이렇게 돼 가지고 사회에 나쁜 여론이 퍼지기 시작했던 것입니다.
July 4, 1955. Reverend Moon was incarcerated on the charges of evading the military draft and destroying families. Overflowing with love for humanity, he did not blame or hate anyone. He was released as innocent three months later. However, the rumors made up at this time are still being used by Christians as though they were facts. God's providence was harmed, and Reverend Moon took the most critical damage, but he did not make any excuses. Truth prevails in the end. As to stand as a proof to this statement, the church continued to expand greatly. Enlightened theologians recognized the value of the divine principle at first sight. Christian Academy House Debate. Yonsei University's professor of theology, Nam Dong So, highly praised the divine principle as the most excellent systematic theology in Korea. The divine principle, in definition, is not a creed of one sect. It is the path of heaven, encompassing the righteous way of heaven, earth, and humans. Therefore, it can be applied anywhere. Knowing the heart of God and Jesus better than anyone else, Reverend Moon has stood in the vanguard of religious reconciliation. In December 2003, leaders from different sects of religions gathered in Israel to coronate Jesus as the King of the Jews. What had seemed impossible was accomplished. Reverend Moon's spirit of religious harmony has been inherited and developed by his children. Not only Christian pastors, but monks from Buddhist sects, including the Dalai Lama and Islam Imams, are joining hands together. In 1960, Reverend Moon was 40 years old. His holy marriage was held in Chongpadong, Seoul. The groom of heaven who found the principle through tears, shedding blood, in order to identify the providence of restoration all alone and now standing victorious. The bride of the earth more pure and beautiful than white lilies, answering the call of heaven. The dream that was never realized since the fall. The joyous day of the relief of heaven's sorrowful heart, the realization of humanity's greatest dream. From this day, Reverend and Mrs. Moon began to walk the path of the true parents, true teachers, and true owners. Seven years after the holy marriage, the two created the model of true peace and heaven on earth. This period was a model course to create the ideal true family that serves God and humanity through the heavenly lineage severed from fallen nature. Reverend and Mrs. Moon set the standard of the true family and then strived to go beyond race, nation, and reach the world. Reverend and Mrs. Moon extended this seven-year model of the public course from the individual level to family, tribe, race, nation, world, 
all the way to the cosmic level, restoring God's lineage and His original status. Korea was an extremely poor nation in the 60s, with a per capita income of $100. Reverend Moon started an enlightenment program in rural areas together with witnessing efforts of his followers. This eventually led the nation to begin the new community movement. Japan was the first world stage pioneered to spread the words of heaven. Reverend Moon visited Japan six years after 1959 when it was first pioneered. He prayed for Japan and led the young people to the path of heaven. The Japanese members risked their lives to spread the principle to university students affiliated with North Korea. Today, Japanese members are the greatest in number in the Unification Church and play an important role in worldwide witnessing. All this would have been impossible if Reverend Moon had not poured so much love into the nation that brought him near to death during the colonization. From the 70s, witnessing in America started upon the foundation created in Korea and Japan. In the early 70s, America was moaning in serious sickness. Young people wandered around without any vision, intoxicated and soiled with drugs and free sex. In the winter of 1971, Reverend Moon left for America. The eccentric pastor from the East began spreading the message of heaven while touring around the nation. After a while, Reverend Moon became an icon for the spiritual revolution of the American society. the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Today,美国的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国家的国
Mrs. Moon's grief was greater than anyone's. Reverend Moon's imprisonment served as the catalyst of a massive movement for religious freedom. The tribulation of Danbury united the American society, especially the Christians who were divided into many different sects. President Barack Obama's mentor, Reverend Joseph Lowry, stood in the forefront of the religious community demanding religious freedom. What I do understand is that I'm not secure until his rights are secure. And Farwell is not secure until Lowry is secure. None of us is secure until all of us are secure. Reverend Moon washed dishes and cleaned his place in the day and read at night. At three in the morning, he woke up to pray for forgiveness for the situation and prayed for the end of the Cold War and for world peace. One month before his release, he directed prominent scholars to proclaim the end of communism in Switzerland. In order to end the Cold War, he used the Washington Times to play a critical role in establishing the Star Wars policy and created the public opinion which helped prevent the spread of communism in Central and South America. Together we rolled up our sleeves and got to work. And, oh yes, we won the Cold War. Reverend Moon was recognized for his efforts to end the Cold War and fight for religious freedom. In this period, Reverend and Mrs. Moon received four honorary doctorates. Reverend Moon was finally released after one year and three months of incarceration. The wrongful imprisonment helped the Unification Church to create a more solid foundation, hastened the end of the Cold War, and promoted religious alliance. These miracles happened during his time in Danbury. Afterwards, the expansion of the Unification Church went beyond America and reached every corner of the globe. Now, Reverend Moon's thoughts and words are spread across 195 nations in all continents. The Church overcame the tribulations of martyrs in communist nations being imprisoned by other religions. The foundation for the victory was none other than Reverend Moon's ceaseless sincerity and support. In 1990, the biggest event in the 20th century happened. It was the fall of communism. On April 11, 1991, Reverend Moon met with Soviet Union President Gorbachev. I must have forgotten about it during the times of perestroika. <laughs> The meeting was held in a lively and friendly mood. Reverend Moon supported Gorbachev, who was working to bring revolution and reformation at the time. The two leaders earnestly discussed about economic cooperation between Korea and the Soviet Union, and also about the peaceful unification of the Korean Peninsula. This hastened the end of the Cold War. Later, Gorbachev visited Reverend and Mrs. Moon in Korea. The smiles on the leaders who put an end to the tragedy of the 20th century were bright.
After the liberation, the Korean peninsula was dominated by the ideological battle of left and right. Untouched by the warm breeze of detente, the relationship of North and South Korea is still ice cold. In 1968, Reverend Moon created the International Federation for Victory over Communism. The International Federation's goal was to research, criticize, and overcome communist theory and system and realize the true ideal of mutual living, prosperity, and righteousness. In 1975, as communism expanded rapidly after the defeat of Vietnam War, blue-eyed foreigners shouting in the streets to save the nation could be seen all over the country. These foreigners were the members of the Unification Church who came from all over the world to participate in the movement. This movement against communism reached its peak in 1975, when one million people gathered at the Save the Nation rally held in Yoido. In 1980, the International Federation for Victory Over Communism movement in Korea developed into a unification movement centering on true love. In 1994, especially when North Korea's Yongbyon nuclear crisis was at its peak, students from both Koreas gathered to discuss reconciliation in Beijing, China. Under the slogan, Love is Thicker Than Blood, Reverend Moon created a turning point for the unification movement. At the international level, the movement developed into Kausa. Kausa was a godism movement with the goal of supporting South America's anti-communism movement. At the time of President Carter, the communization of the world reached its peak. Reverend Moon played a critical role in helping Reagan become president by defeating Carter, the favored candidate. Reagan, 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 선거 선거하는 작전이셨습니다. 전략이 있었어요. Washington DC, America's heart of politics. Reverend Moon founded the Washington Times in 1982 to correct the public opinion that had been heavily influenced by the left wing. The newspaper gave great influence and strength to the White House all the way till the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 90s. From the start the Washington Times were not shy about challenging the more established media outlets. Freedom prevailed in the Cold War, uh, without a shot being fired, I might add. In difficult times, even more than in easy ones, the voice of conservatism must make itself heard in the media. Reverend Moon worried more about the world after the end of the Cold War. Can we go beyond the walls of national boundaries, race, culture and religion and create a world of perpetual peace and happiness? The question all religions seek for an answer. Reverend Moon proposes international blessing marriage ceremony as the answer. Reverend Moon teaches that through the blessing, humanity can be rid of original sin, be connected to the heavenly divine lineage and after removing fallen nature through the path of indemnity, 
we will find the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The blessing marriage ceremony, which started in 1960 with three couples, increased into hundreds of millions of couples in just 40 years. Finally, on January 27, 2001, the World Peace Blessing Ceremony was held at the New York UN headquarters. Blacks with whites, wealthy and poor, Japanese and Koreans, Jews and Christians giving their vows. The intercultural, inter-exchange, international blessing marriage ceremony is no longer a unification church ritual. This is receiving attention as the fundamental solution to realize the ideal of one world family under one God. This blessing ceremony has expanded as a movement to recover the family, transcending race, religion, theology, and culture. The United Nations, often dubbed as the world government, though stating to arbitrate the interests of 195 member nations, Unceasing sharp conflict between these nations remains so that the UN can hardly work to fulfill its original function. Reverend Moon aims to revolutionize the social system through NGOs and the UN, centering on the blessings of families. The UN's gate was first opened through Mrs. Moon. She proclaimed the dawning of the Age of Women in 1992 and founded the Women's Federation for World Peace and began to renew the UN. Many speeches at the UN followed. In 2000, Reverend and Mrs. Moon spoke together, calling for the renewal of the UN. In 2011, at the UN headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland, Mrs. Moon conveyed the message of peace to every nation in the world. Reverend Moon's main goal for the renewal of the UN is to implement the system of Senate and Representatives. In order to hasten the renewal of the UN, Reverend Moon founded the Universal Peace Federation. Transcending the profit of one's own nation, in order to create a solution for world peace, Reverend Moon mobilized his entire foundation for world peace. The original UN is called the Kane UN, and this new organization is called the ABLE UN. Current and former national leaders from all over the world who support Reverend Moon's peace initiative are participating in large numbers under the title of Peace Ambassador. President Jonathan Goodluck, who became President of Nigeria in July 2000, has been actively participating in Reverend Moon's world peace movement as a peace ambassador. After the inauguration, the President Good Luck invited Reverend and Mrs. Moon and hosted a Universal Peace Federation rally. It was to find a solution for the country's racial conflict and for the revival of Africa. One family under God. All UPF activities are aligned with this one vision and its foundation is spread all across the world. International NGOs created by Reverend Moon are active in many fields. The UPF is working internationally for the renewal of the UN and nationally for the education of peace ambassadors and the unification movement. Along with the Women's Federation for World Peace, which is opening a new horizon for a new women's movement as an UN NGO, other NGOs consisting of students and other volunteers are striving to create a better world. True peace begins from spiritual healing. Heaven and Earth Training Center, where you can experience training and meditation centering on unification principle. Reverend Moon is working hard to lead not just Christians, but representatives from all major religions to overcome their differences and work together for the unity of humanity. 
The foundation for the equalization of technology is being laid in both industrial and economic fields to create a mutually prosperous world. All fields from medicine, beverages, machinery, construction, shipbuilding, and even leisure tourism. Reverend Moon gives special attention and much investment into the ocean industry and aviation industry in order to solve world hunger and to prepare for the space age. Media outlets in Korea, Japan, and America are providing fast and accurate information and leading the formation of a righteous public opinion. Raising global leaders with international minds who show love for heaven, human, and the nation. Schools from preschool to graduate schools are in operation in Korea and America. Here, the gate to the world of learning and truth is open. Culture, art, and sports, which transcend all barriers. The Little Angels and Universal Ballet make the world beautiful through Korea's traditional dances, songs, and heavenly art. Martial arts combining East and West. Songnam Ilhwa, the top soccer team in Asia, and the world-level international soccer tournament, the Peace Cup. Reverend Moon is creating the world centering on the culture of heart, which transcends all national boundaries. Reverend Moon also greatly influenced Korea's automobile and electronics industry. In 1980, he brought automobile parts manufacturing technologies from Germany to Korea. And in 1988, he bought Japan's Wacom Electronics and led the development of Korea's electronics industry. After the mid-90s, Reverend Moon expanded to South America. In 1997, at age 77, Reverend Moon explored the rainforest of the Amazon and pioneered the path humanity will tread in the new millennium. Pantanal, Brazil still contains the wonders of ancient nature. Here, Reverend Moon is educating the community culture of a peaceful world and is preparing the foundation for the leisure industry of the future. There is another place where Reverend Moon has been paying much attention from the year 2008. That place is known as today's Sodom and Gomorrah, the sin city, Las Vegas. Reverend Moon has been investing his time and money to turn Las Vegas from sin city to sun city. This is because he knows God's heart, which yearns to save every last soul in the deepest depth of hell. Furthermore, he is attracting the attention of the world with the Bering Strait Project, under operation along with the Korea-Japan undersea tunnel, which are both being worked on. The nations concerned are discreetly discussing the matter. The project, which is called the World Peace King Bridge and Tunnel, will connect Russia and America, and it symbolizes the effort to destroy the barriers made by Satan. Tongil Group exists to support this ideal. Reverend Moon's countless international activities of various different fields have one main purpose. This is to tear down all barriers and realize God's ideal of creating one family under God. And so, in effect, the Unification Church will be the church which inherits the foundation of Christ to complete the work which Christ started. And so the Tongil Foundation is playing the supporting role to that. It will support the church, the Unification Church, and its growth and its development so that it can reach the point where it can really inherit the foundation of Christianity worldwide. Reverend Moon hosted innumerable rallies proclaiming God's message. His words changed individuals, renewed societies, and serve as the driving force behind the changes of nations. Mrs. Moon, who silently helped him from behind and started standing beside him from 1992 and accompanied him in more than 1,000 international speaking tours. When Mrs. Moon was on international speaking tours, Reverend Moon congratulated her on the victories through conference calls. Hey. 
Congratulations to you. Congratulations to parents. Open mouth for Dab, 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 Dab. Dab, Dab, my Dab. From the wilderness of Africa to the UN headquarters, Reverend Moon went to all corners of the earth. Despite any dangers of South American mountain sicknesses or African endemic disease, he brought the words of heaven to the ends of the earth. Reverend Moon has lived by God's words his entire life. His will can be seen through his calligraphies. All the calligraphies written on the first of every year from 1960. The calligraphies written at offering ceremonies for events of buildings and monuments and such give us a glimpse of Reverend Moon's heart and philosophy. In each stroke and letter is his unchanging determination for the completion of God's will and his sincere hopes to restore God's homeland. Begins at early dawn, 5 a.m. morning, Hundake, started in 1997 and has become the tradition of Unification Church. Reverend Moon treats all people with the same love, whether they may be one person or thousands, young or old. He normally speaks for three to four hours, sometimes 12 hours. He has even spoken for more than 20 hours at times. His disciples remain seated without eating anything. Reverend Moon speaks to his children with all his energy. Sometimes he tells others to stand up and share their stories or sing. Even after 12 hours, Reverend Moon continues without paying attention to the passage of time, his voice trembling with concern. The collection of his speeches has already exceeded 500 volumes. If we combine all the different types of his books, there are more than 1,000 books. God's will is in his every word. His every sentence contains God's ideal for creation, humans fall, Jesus' life course, and the tears of blood that had to be shed for the providence of restoration. When reading Reverend Moon's words, one cannot help but cry when coming to understand the sorrow and pain of heaven. The words of truth make our character mature, and a life of true love makes us holy. Reverend Moon's words are the path, the truth, and the life. These words are our textbook from which we must learn. In March 2004, an amazing event took place at the U.S. Capitol building. Along with major religious leaders, U.N. ambassadors from many nations and U.S. congressmen, and many world leaders of different fields crowned Reverend and Mrs. Moon as the Peace King. Reverend Moon's life and works, despite all the persecution, moves the hearts of the righteous. The crown of glory was offered to God. Under the title of Peace King, 
Reverend Moon held coronation ceremonies in Korea and America in January 2009. This was the day the pain of 6,000 years due to the human fall was relieved and the day the sovereignty stolen by Satan was reclaimed back to God's side. The promise he made with heaven at 16 was finally fulfilled at age 90. Uh, 아버님, 제일 소중한 한자 뭡니까? 한번 물어봤습니다. 그러니까 어, 어, 아버님께서 수만 한자 중에 이제 한 순간에 그냥 딱한 한자 쓰셨는데 그거는 바로 정성성자였습니다. 정성성자. 말씀은 이루어성. 그러니까 말씀을 이루어야 된다. 어, 이런 사람 되어야 된다. 아버님께서 정말로 말씀을 이루어셨던 분입니다. 하고 평생 동안에 정성으로 사셨던 분이에요. 하나님 위한 정성, 세계 위한 정성, 평화 위한 정성. 사랑 위한 정성 이런 정성 들이시면서 사셨던 분이 Walking the way of the will was a thorny path of tribulations. The biggest tragedy was sending their five children to heaven. Adding to the sadness of losing five of his family members when he was a young boy his pain multiplied. Is there more indemnity left to be paid, which required the life of my firstborn son? His life more precious than my own. Though we know about the spirit world, the bearing of each child is unbearable, tearing my heart to pieces. However, Reverend and Mrs. Moon held their tears back for God and for the providence, even when they wanted to cry their hearts out. Reverend Moon himself came close to death seven times. He often traveled by airplane to spread the words of heaven quickly to as many places and people as possible. He almost died six times in prisons, and the last time was by helicopter. This unexpected accident was reported through the world on July 19, 2008. While he was flying to Chongpyeong, his private helicopter crashed and exploded. Shortly afterwards, however, all 16 passengers evacuated safely. People called this a miracle. Heaven protected them from Satan's last attack. Reverend Moon told his feelings about the incident to three of his grandchildren. The ocean has a special place in Reverend Moon's heart. Whether in rain or snow, even when the waves raged, he always spent time in the ocean. On days without great events, he would frequently go out to the ocean. Through fishing, he understood the heart of heaven and set plans for the providence. The ocean and fishing was another form of prayer and devotion. He spent his days with heaven in one hand, the earth in the other, seeking to correct the course of history. Trotting through the mud while bearing the burden of history on his back. His days of pioneering the path of heaven 
which God and humanity have long awaited, living strictly in line with heavenly principles every moment of the day. Six times of wrongful imprisonment and numerous persecutions, even sacrificing his flesh and blood to heaven, shattering his heart to pieces, his determination to bring about the liberation of God and the salvation of humanity became steadfast while out on the ocean. Remaining ever silent, the ocean consoled Reverend Moon's heart. It helped him overcome all the suffering. The ocean has been his lifelong partner and the representative of heaven helping hope spring up like a fountain. Now, bases for oceanic operations are established all around the world. They are founded in order to solve problems of world hunger and the energy crisis through the ocean. Reverend Moon also invented the resin molding method and created a leisure boat to hasten the dawn of the age of ocean leisure. The path of restoration filled with tears of blood his cheerful spirit helped to endure the hardships. He sings and dances when he is happy, anywhere and anytime. He enjoys songs that sing of love for the homeland and country. Just as songs and dances transcend barriers and connect people's hearts together, he sincerely wishes that humanity will become one. The new heaven, the new earth, and the new age have dawned. The painful past of striving to achieve the will of heaven on this earth now shines as the beacon for the new millennium. Liberating God from his inexpressible agony, which was so deep and vast that even if the sky was paper and the ocean was ink, you could not record it all. Not much time is left now until the foundation day of God's homeland, Chanilgu. There will be no more sins, no more tears, a place overflowing with peace, freedom, happiness, and true love. In order to establish His kingdom and its righteousness, Reverend Moon continues to march forward mightily on the path of the true parents of humanity, the true teacher of history, and the peace king of God's homeland. Okay, thank you, Sister Molina, for the enlightening uh, presentation as well as the video showing of our True Parents uh, Life Course. So I think we need to elaborate. Everything has been presented in detail as well as in the video showing. So uh, sorry, it's time already, but we have to extend a little bit, few minutes to accommodate your reflections. So again, let's give a round of applause to our 
lecturer this evening, Sister Munina Balanay. Okay, for the reflection, any volunteer? Walang mag-volunteer? Ako na lang? Volunteer okay. po ako. Okay, thank you. Let's welcome Anna May. Um, good evening po, brothers and sisters. Uh, my, re <laughs> my reflection po for this evening is that thinking of what happened to Father in his time, I was saddened thinking about how horrible are the people at the time of Father Moon and of Jesus. Um, I think uh, I, I have this thinking po na how they can handle such wickedness po? Do they have a heart? Is their heart made of stone or metal? Or, parang wala po silang awa. Parang ganun po. And then, um, I can't imagine what life in the future they would offer. What will gonna happen to their descendants po? Then, I can't imagine how sorrowful heart of God upon seeing those dreadful acts of human po. And um, following TP's journey po is a bumpy ride indeed po. Along the way, we will encounter tremendous waves of difficulties. Um, sometimes um, we tend to give up already because the burden um, we carried is too heavy na po. Parang hindi na po natin kaya yung mga burden po. Um, like um, I bought I, as what I have read in the autobiography of Father Moon, um, it stated that, Father Moon stated that um, any period of trial in this world has the important meaning. And even if we are persecuted, um, still we must serve. Even if we are betrayed, still we must believe. Even if we receive hatred and judgments, still we must forgive and give love. And for me po, these persecutions we I have encountered have a deep meaning for me. Um, for me, um, all of those persecution made me bolder now than before po and braver than of yesterday and of course wiser from now po. This could be all po. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anna May, for the reflections. Okay, uh, Anna May stated, uh, he reflected on those people who made true father suffer, especially on those uh, pers uh, tortured, on which uh, really this, these people have no hearts with regards to what they are doing to true father. So he, he said that what, what should be the consequences of their actions? Uh, the return of that, doing that to to father, and also reflecting on her uh, uh, experiences that he, she encounters uh, persecution that it has some meaning. Of course, uh, in our church, it the more we persecute our church, the more it becomes bigger. So from from this level becomes the worldwide level. So that that has been the secret also. It grows while people um, persecute our church. So thank you, Anna May, again for the reflection. Okay, another one from brothers. Okay, let's welcome Sinobasi Vince. Okay, let's welcome Beans. Can you hear me, Pa? Ah, yes, loud and clear. So uh, my reflection for the day, um, um, 
seeing um, Father Moon's journey from his childhood days po. Um, it was really um, heart, um, heartwarming and also heartbreaking po. And um, knowing all of his um, ano po, mga pinagdadaan, ay pinagdaanan, we could really um, testify, um, we could really say na siya na talaga yung ano po, tinakda. And um, but I, could, I could reflect din po doon um, sa mga ginawa niya is um, we should all also do the same po so that um, people could um, testify, have a testimony about us po. Because um, we cannot say, we cannot claim ourselves only, uh, uh, we cannot claim or insist ourselves alone. Um, talagang, um, it comes from the people po talaga. And um, like, ano po, um, if you're doing something good, um, you cannot say that like, um, oh, I'm a good person because I'm doing this. But in order to, ano po, um, to really, um, um, to really, um, yung, um, to really, be a person who who embodies goodness it doesn't come from you but it comes from other people that's why we must um even though like father father have um been undergone even though he was persecuted he was um, um he was um yeah. um palagi siyang uh, inano binabato ng mga mistakes but despite all of that still um look into god's um point of view and um still do what is right so dapat din po para sa atin um even though marami naman talagang masasabi ng iyong tao kahit ano pang gawin natin so para sa akin lang po um kung anong yung um um tamang dapat na tamang gawin yun talaga ang gagawin natin because we cannot um ano po we cannot um we cannot um, rely on people i uh, know we cannot um because there are a lot of um um things that a people can say um so um and also po about the um persecutions po that he has um ano po even though he was persecuted po I was really um touched po because um even though he was persecuted and he was being tortured and tormented by all the people that he have known still um he stand and also po can <laughs> I can explain po, but um um, the word consequences, um, the consequences that he gave was not a negative one, but like in a way that it is um, positive one, like um, the consequence of anong tawag dun na anong term um, the consequence that he um returned is um um true love so yun po and um, father moon is really um inspiring po and i'm always excited po um to know more po and I'm really um, accustomed and intoxicated by um all of his teachings po. Um, so yun lang po siguro yung share ko so thank you Okay, thank you, Vince, for the reflection. Okay, Vince said that he was amazed with True Father's uh, ability while in childhood, his character, and also uh, if if you are a good person, 
you cannot say that I'm good, but it should be the other people that would say that to you, that you are good. And also other with regards to true father's suffering in torture, but we know the true father even comforted God in that situation. So we can see really the heart of true father in uh, liberating God's heart. Okay, again, thank you, Vince, for the reflection. Okay, uh, let's welcome Christinette for the sister for her reflection. Good evening, heavy parents. Good evening, true parents. Good evening, Good evening lecturers, elders, brothers, and sisters. Um, my reflection for about the topic tonight for is that um, knowing the course of true parents is so much great. Uh, so much. I am so much thankful for talaga na, even though in ano po na, even in the short um, ano po ng content ng video is more depend as how true parents lead the way to have a victorious um, to have a victory to offer to heavenly parents po that um, even in his persecution he never stopped in doing such a uh, risk on how humanity will uh, restore on, on their own, on their um, original position. Po. And, and so <laughs> I am so much um, amazed on how true parents, especially true father, um, dedicate his, his life in how many times that he in prison, persecuted, um, life and death situation, it is uh, no one can uh, make or make that to just to offer to heavenly parents and knowing it i don't know if uh, all if that this persecution that we have or we um in happen in our lives is not just a ano a parang walang Di po mapapatay kung ano yung nagawa ni Chuck Parents. And para na-realize ko po na bakit ako nag- Bakit ako nag-complain? Bakit ako ganito? Bakit ako- Kasi Chuck Parents never complain. Instead, he prays that all humanity will um, be restored. And pinaka naalala ko na line ni Chuck Parents is yung di siya nag-pray for him himself but he prays that uh, heavenly pad heavenly parents is happy on what he did and he said to heavenly parents that he will uh, just uh, don't parang wag mo kalahanin god kaya ko do parang ganun and i'm so parang siya lang po yung Naring, narinig ko or naalaman ko na ganun mag-pray. And I am so much grateful that I know true parents and re-embrace him in this uh, last days, in this golden era. And I'm I am so much uh, parang ano po, hindi uh, ko po may tinang feelings pag Nang uh, if we talk about two parents, kasi um, stop parang mix emotion po. And then when I heard from the uh, um, persecution or judgment that humanity has been uh, said to have uh, two parents, it is so much uh, parang guilt po para sa akin kasi. Why is that even they know about the children's legacy, children's uh, leadership, and children's um, love for humanity, why is that they always question his um, being leader? And for me, it when I heard uh, that this is the 
uh, last days and this is the um, second uh, second coming. I am so much uh, in the first. I am so shocked because for us in a in our own religion, there's no uh, time po na this is the second coming or walang revelation po na second coming na and for for them po is if they heard like when I when our time of um, struggles po and the time that happened in our life na from persecuted po and then they ask it, who will be your uh, who will be your ano parang Jesus Christ po your yung Father Moon ganun, ganun, that was it is so much pain for us that really or really notice or really uh, know to parents na parang paano i-defend pero paano namin sasabihin na dapat maniwala kayo and tapos <laughs> tapos ano po at the end of the day po uh, we will just realize that the biggest um, revenge on those people who persecuted us is to be um, really forgive them and will uh, give them the love that uh, even though there's an, uh, they are not lovable or they will just uh, we will just give love to them and we hope that uh, soon in they will uh, be knowing two parents as their uh, second Messiah and hoping that it will realize to humanity because this day is the last day that yes we have to embrace the second advent. That could be all. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Christinette, for the reflection. So Christinette said that he was uh, amazed with true parents' determination of his soul to really uh, liberate God's heart. And also, he also experienced, she also experienced persecution, uh, but he also reflected that we have to love these people, these unlovable people. And uh, thank you, Christine, for that reflection. And sorry, we don't, uh, we cannot uh, accommodate anymore because of uh, the time. So this time, we'll have to close this with a prayer. So I would like to ask uh, Sister Munina for the closing prayer. Okay, brothers and sisters, please join in my prayer. Loving heavenly parents, and we trust your parents of heaven, earth, and all humankind. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful night that you've given to us. Especially, Father, we study about your know, true parents, like what's in the parents, but your parents, like heavenly parents, that's not easy, heavenly parents, to, um, to talk with heavenly parents. Father in heaven, we hope and pray, Father, that through this similar parents, we could be able to really feel, especially fathers, um, especially father, our true fathers, dedication in my parents and inspiration in my parents, daily in my parents. We're so much blessed and grateful in my parents that through this divine principle in my parents, we could really know in my parents your heart. We could really know in my parents the heart of our true fathers life with my parents thank you so much for this wonderful day he my parents that you've given to us my parents through this my parents we could be able to really understand my parents we could be able to really use us as your masterpiece my parents most peace my parents to all the brothers and sisters who don't know yet about the principles mother thank you so much for always guiding us and protecting us my parents and also to all the participants here my parents Give them strength, my parents, and inspiration, my parents, to know you more, Father in heaven. Thank you so much for everything, for your love and guidance, my parents, day by day, my parents. As we offer this prayer in behalf of our elders, leaders, brothers, and sisters, in your parents' name, Jew. 
Aju. Yeah, Aju, thank you. Again, thank you, participants, for coming and also for your particip participation. Thank you, Sister Monina, for the enlightening presentation and video showing. Thank you, lecturers, for your presence here in our session. See you next time. And don't forget to write your reflection. Okay. Um, yes, thank you so Bye. much po, Kuya Julius. Um, sa announcement, announcement lang po, announcement. yung hindi po nakapag-register po ng Blessing Festival po, please sign in na po. Yung sinend ko po last week about sa, ano, sa Google Sheet po. So, yan lang po yung ano. So, hoping kasi last, tomorrow is the last day of registration. It's free lang po siya. So, yun na po brothers and sisters. Thank you so much po. Once again, see you po next meeting. Thank bye you. everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Good night, Good night po. Good night. Good night po. Good night po. Good night everyone. Good night sa mga YouTube. Good night sa mga sa mga nag-youtube na kalimutan. Ate Christinette. Kuya Vince, thank you so much. Ate Manen, yung reflection ko. Send mo na lang sa akin. May ano ako doon. May question please. Ano na lang sa akin, PM. Ayan na mo na lang. Message. Wala talaga to. So anyway. Sige po. Thank you po. Bye everyone. Bye po. Goodbye po. Thank you so much po.